going guys? Slain HD here today. So I'm going to be making a video today about how to stay anonymous on the internet. What I mean by anonymous is being able to use Google, uh, check your Facebook, browse the internet, do whatever it is you do on the internet without having your data collected, monitored, and stored in a database. Now, I personally don't think it's fair or I don't think it's right that my data is being collected and used for whatever tests, um, you know, for whatever reason, I don't think it's fair that they have my data and use it and in some cases make money off of it. I don't think it's right and I think it's an invasion of my privacy. The reasoning behind this is, you know, as they say, to prevent terrorism and prevent crime or whatever it may be. But Personally, that to me doesn't mean they should have the right to just monitor anyone and everyone. So I'm not going to get into the politics of it. That's a whole nother discussion. Today, we're just going to talk about how you can be anonymous online or as close to anonymous online as possible. Like I said, um, you know, when you're on the Internet and you're on Facebook or you're searching stuff in Google, how to how to fix a flat tire, how to change your oil. Uh, how to cure a headache, whatever it is, that all that information is being massively s stored in databases and compiled, right? So, for example, if you've ever been shopping, say you've been shopping for a family member, it's Christmas time, you're looking at uh, whatever it may be. Say you're looking at uh, baby clothes, right? So you're looking in Google, you type in baby clothes, you look through a few baby clothes. And then if you go to Facebook, all of a sudden, if you look to the right, you'll notice there's ads about baby clothes. That's no coincidence, okay? That's because Google has collected your information and now they're aggressively advertising to what it is you're searching. Now, I don't know how you feel about that, but I don't think that's right. And to a lot of people, they probably don't care. Do you know? Maybe it's convenient for some people. But me personally, I don't like it. And if you're like me, then I've got some ways for you to stay anonymous. Now, I'm on this, the NSA's page, show you some some pictures they have here. So here you can see, you know, these pictures will basically explain how, quote unquote, they are capturing our data, you know, phone records, uh, their prison program. So as you can see right here, Facebook, Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, Skype, YouTube, AOL, it captures this and then it sends it to them. On the on, in their whole prism, their whole prism program. Okay, so anything you're doing on any of these sites, that's available for them to see, whether you're doing something wrong or not. Emails, private conversations, anything. I'll link this site in the description. You can look more into it. Let's get into how to be anonymous. So, okay, Tor browser, and I'll include a down, uh, download link in the description. So what Tor is? It's a free software for anonymous communication on the internet, right? Basically how it works is it directs traffic, internet traffic, through this worldwide volunteer network. Free, it's a free volunteer worldwide network and it has thousands of relays. I think like more than 6,000 relays which conceal the user or you, your location being your IP address, which your IP address is pretty much a link to where you are, who you are. And it blocks that from anyone who's say, monitoring your traffic, conducting any type of network surveillance, or, or using what you do for traffic analysis. And before, let me, let me just get this out of the way. So TOR's intended use, and this is from Wikipedia, and TOR's intended use is to protect the personal privacy of users as well as their freedoms and ability to conduct confidential communication by not allowing their internet activities to be monitored. That's TOR's intended use. Now, over the years, Tor has gotten a bad rep because it's gotten tied into this whole dark web fad, which I'm not going to go too much into to read about it. But Tor has all of a sudden become associated with that as if Tor was made for that. And that's not the case. And that's what they want you to think. They want you to think that Tor is this big evil thing that allows all these people to do evil things on the internet. And that's not the case. It just so happened that bad people use a good thing, a good resource to do bad stuff. But that doesn't make Tor bad. 
Now, the way it works is the onion routing. So with Tor browser, let me open up Tor. I got Tor open up for you. So it uses dot onion, not dot com. And the routing is implemented by encryption at the application layer of a communication protocol stack, which is nested. And that's where they get the name onions from, it's, you know, the layers of an onion. Um, but let me show you how it works. So here's Google I have loaded. And I'm in America, but according to Google, I'm not. Okay, I believe this is somewhere in the Netherlands. As you can see, it's in another language. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Google thinks I'm someone who I'm not. So currently my IP address, according to Google, is not my real IP address. So by that, they don't really know who I am. Now, of course, the NSA, they can probably figure it out if they really wanted to. But at least this is a step you can take to be more anonymous online. Now, if you look at the home webpage, there's something cool here. Edward Snowden would not have been able to contact me without Tor and other free software encryption projects. Tor is an essential tool, and it needs our support. So that's pretty much it. Um, make sure you read what's next and how you can help. Donate if you... If you can, you know, if you want to support Tor, I have. I love it and everything it stands for. But thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Dislike it if you didn't. And make sure to subscribe for more. Thanks, guys.